that's that's okay. Today on The Grid, we are sharing some of our favorite tips for portrait photography with our special guest, photographer Lenworth Johnson is here, which is a big day for us here at The Grid. The real man, the can of ham. He drives a Dodge Ram. He has a Florida tan. He eats brand. He's from Curve Like a Stand. The real rocket man, Eric Kuna, is here, and I think he's actually shaved. We've got some sweet, sweet giveaways, and it all starts in just 30 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should, too. Go to platypod.com. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and say, anyway, hi. Welcome, folks. <laughs> Welcome to the grid. Start a little oh, late. Boy. Start a little was Eric's fault. All my fault. I look, showed up. I look just how, walked in. Wait, wait. I was like, I got to shave. Look how clean Eric is. <laughs> Seriously, is. this is baby Eric. Yeah. This is Eric as a baby. This is a baby picture we're looking at. This was taken when he was 17 years old. Yep, that's it. Wow. You're just so clean. I looked over. I'm like, holy wow. cow. What, what happened happens? over there? <laughs> All right. So, guys, we have a very special guest joining us for this day. We are talking about portraits, but we have a very special guest today, and, and it's special for, for a, a number of reasons for me, because I, I watched his career just blossom uh, oh, yeah. over the years. So, he, he, a long time ago, he said, hey, can I follow you on LinkedIn? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Well, follow me on LinkedIn. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a Kelby One member, and... And, and, and I'm a photographer, and that's all you have to be. <laughs> yeah, you're in. So he gets in. Now, LinkedIn is one of the few feeds I actually look at on a regular basis. I, I can't look at my Twitter feed anymore because all it is is people being angry about politics. And I don't, I just, I don't, I, when I look at my feed, I want to see photography and I want to talk about fun stuff and good stuff and food and travel and happiness. Yeah. And I don't want to talk about politics or anything that that's just makes I love me angry. Instagram. So that's yeah, in, that's why I love Instagram because Instagram it's just pictures, <laughs> and so and and anyway, so I start seeing his work and I'm like, you know, this guy's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, I watched him go from this guy's pretty good to this guy's real good to holy crap, this guy's killing it. Yeah, and and so he guys gotten so good that we're like, you need to come and teach people what you're doing at Kelby One. And so he's gone from a guy that I watched, you know, a long time yep. ago, yep. to like a Kelby One instructor in in no time, and he's here with us today, live yeah. in the Coming studio. Coming to Photoshop world, yeah, the Photoshop world, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. amazing. All right, and so here he is. There he is, okay. Lenworth. Hey, Welcome Lenworth. to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and we're your biggest fans, man. I, I've been watching you grow and grow and grow and stuff. And I keep, I'll see you in the chat sometimes here on the grid. And I'll go, hey, it's Lenworth. That guy's really good. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. It's awesome. I feel like I'm at the Grammys for somehow. This is like the Grammys. It's very much like the Grammys. It's, there's no audience here either. <laughs> It's very strange. It's very much like it. But anyway, we're honored to have you here today. And uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, tips for making better portraits. Uh, and so uh, you have obviously got a lot of them. And, and, and I, I'm going to be picking your brain today. <laughs> In fact, I have a portrait shoot right after the grid today. Okay. So I'm going to be stealing some of your ideas and, you repurposing, and repurposing them <laughs> on, my, on my next shoot. So it's interesting. Um, so let me tell you what I'm doing, what my portrait shoot is. All right. So because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a personal project. So, so one, one of my friends like, uh, sends me a, a senior portrait, right? Went away. And, and, and it's an ex a sample picture. And she says, this is what they're doing at my kid's school. And they're charging hundreds of dollars for it. Would you mind taking my kid's portrait? I'm like, absolutely. I would love to. So I'm very excited about it and, and, and doing it for her because she, she's awesome. And, uh, and she works here. She's really, really just an incredibly talented person. And she'll be able to, to take the digital files that I do and create magic, much like what Lenworth does. But uh, anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing this afternoon right after the grid here today. So our studios are on the other side of that wall, like over that way. So I'll just head over there, throw up a light or two. There you go. Maybe use a camera. And, and for this show, what I'll be doing is just asking questions because I, I really have nothing much to offer to, to this show. But well, you've got great uh, people to answer portrait questions here, fashion questions, all right. uh, beauty questions, all that stuff. So if you guys have any questions for us or specifically for them, uh, just ask and we'll, uh, we'll ask them 
uh, okay. for the feedback. All right. So yeah, we're, we'd love to take your questions uh, today. Hey, uh, one more thing. Um, all, right, all right, we're three up. Can my head not be so large when we zoom in? Like, I look like I have a super head. So Mike, can you... Can you do something to where I don't have a supersized head? Like Eric looks like his little baby head. Of course, he is little baby Eric, and yeah, maybe that's little it. Little baby Eric. Yeah. But you have to go to three up to see it, because I look okay here. You know, well, one up. I have a regular size head. But when we go three up, oh, that's better. There you go. All right. Boom. Oh, hey. All right. Okay. Thank you. Like I just, I look better from a distance. I, I noticed that when I'm small in the frame, mm -hmm. I look a lot like George Clooney. When I'm big in the frame, I look more like Shrek. So it's just the further back go, the better. All right, Lunworth, let's talk to you. Yes. Yep. So how are things, Lunworth? Pretty good. I'm <laughs> excited to be here, and uh, it's been a fun time. So let me ask you a question. Would you say that, that you're doing beauty style stuff, right? Beauty yes. Beauty portraits? Beauty portraits. All right. And beauty portraits, are they're, they're their own particular genre. They are a... Because people, you know, I, I, and I don't know about you, Eric, but a lot of people are confused. I, I, I will say I'm one of those people. I am totally confused. Like when you say beauty, fashion, portraits. Yeah, that's like, what I want to like, describe. I, it. I just, I, I mean, all right. they all look like pictures of people and some no, are fancy. They are, they are different. Are, yeah. So first, fashion is about the clothing. Clothing. Yeah, that's what a fashion is. Fashion is, so uh, um, a portrait is about the person. Right there, you're yeah. trying to capture the person. Mm -hmm. A beauty headshot is a style of headshot that is usually not always, but I would see if you you would agree with this, Lenworth, because I want to hear you. Is usually a very high key shot, a very bright shot, often shot on a on a white background, occasionally on a black background, mm -hmm. but it is often used. I don't want to say this; it's going to sound kind of cheesy. Often used to sell beauty products. Okay. So if you walk yeah. through Macy's and you go through the if you go through or Dillard's or wherever you shop, where do you shop here? <laughs> uh, the rocket store. Rocket uh, store. Uh, online. <laughs> <laughs> if you walk through there, you, that's where you see beauty portraits. They are they are they yeah. are to sell like Tommy Bahama. Like fashion is to sell clothing and beauty products are to sell makeup. I mean, I, how would you describe I, it? I mean, it, 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 it's yeah, kind I'm of starting to get it, but what does Lenworth think? Yeah, Lenworth. Well, yeah, how? it's it's kind of the same. It's um, you sell in makeup products, you know, lipstick, because you have all these beautiful makeup. So it's more geared towards the product. Yeah, it's it's you're selling something. Where right. a portrait is is not. You're not really selling anything. Right. The yeah. portrait is just featuring that person. Right. Right. Yeah. Like a headshot, the company headshot. Yeah, like your LinkedIn headshot. Yes. Right. And so, so fashion, clothing. Fashion's clothing. Beauty is more about the Selling product. The product yeah, of, yeah. Uh, some makeup product. And then product. portrait, just about that person. Yeah, fashion sells clothes. Beauty sells makeup. And portrait is about the person. And then there is an environmental hey, th portrait. That actually, that actually probably made, that, that made a lot of sense to me. An environmental portrait is where you're trying to tell a story, like a fireman in a firehouse. Like yes. you're not, it's that's not the, just him that's with that the Joe McNally. That's a Joe or, McNally. Uh, Tyler yeah. Stableford, like yep, their style. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. There's their kind of stuff. All right. So now, now, Lenworth, you you've had like a breakout here. Like I've I've seen all of a sudden your work. So so first off, who do you who like who are your inspiring people that you follow for beauty? Like who who are your like oh man the people I go to look at their stuff here. Well, who, Lindsay Adler is a big one. Yeah, um, she's so Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Jordan Simmet is another big one. Yep. You know? So those two I, I kind of follow and I do learn a lot from them. Yeah, you know, Lindsay, uh, so usually someone does either fashion or they do beauty. Some people can do beauty and fashion mm -hmm. and, and Lindsay does both of those so well. Yeah. And uh, oh, look at that. Man, yeah. is that a good That's shot. Cool. Oh really yeah. Cool. See, these are like I was saying they're they're often on a white background or a black background, and mm -hmm. these are still clearly beauty shots. Mm -hmm. That one's going a, a tad towards fashion, just because you see more of the subject. Yes. And then this one looks. Isn't that weird? If you see more of the subject, it becomes fashion. It becomes fashion. Yeah. If you see, wow, that's so cool. Who does your style? Like, who's doing your makeup? Well, I have a makeup artist, Camille Roque, that I work with, and. So I'll come up with these ideas and I run it by her and she say, dude, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so you come up with the ideas. I come up with the ideas. I have, you know, 
bunch of ideas that I go through per year and I have all these crazy oh, drawings. I love and look at that shot. Being a graphic designer makes it a little easier for me to. Is, is that your background as graphic designer? Graphic design. Oh, man. You know, I've, I've said this so many times on the grid, mm -hmm. graphic designers make the best photographers. Oh, yeah. They really do because... And you can tell that in the use of negative space or yeah. the use yep. of contrast. And the and use of color. Color, yeah. Wow. So, so, Lenworth, you have one of the things that I struggle with the most, which is just coming up with the ideas. And that's the easy part. That's the easy part for you because it comes easy for you yeah. because like, well, isn't that funny though? Uh, you know, you both shoot that stuff, but that's where I, I know you've talked about that before. You struggle with the coming up with the ideas. So Lenworth, what, it, what do you think? Like, what is your biggest struggle uh, with this stuff? It's more like getting it done. The whole planning, you know, if we have a shoot today, the whole planning, that's the harder part for me. But to light it, it's, I'm pretty comfortable there. You know, coming up with the ideas, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm watching a TV show, I see something I like, and then I make notes and I'll go research and put something together. Ah, wow. cool. So, you know, we've, we've talked about doing either a webcast or something like that. So, so Lenworth, we, we have a producer here. So Christina, who, she runs our whole video department, but, but she is also a producer. She has a, a production background in in Hollywood movies and stuff. So she's used to working with a, putting a big nightmare together. So if, if I come to her and say, here's what I want to do, she does all of that stuff for me. She's fantastic. <laughs> like, she will find a location. She'll get the, the models, the, the, the releases. She'll, she'll do, get the catering. I mean, she puts the whole everything together, which then all I have to worry about is the lighting, mm -hmm. right? And that is the easy part. I think for beauty, I think that is one of the easiest things to light. Hmm. It, it takes a, a couple of different lights, right? Yes. I mean, usually it's not just one light, but it is a, it's kind of a recipe. Yes, you know what helped me a lot with lighting is I went out and bought a mannequin, a full body mannequin, and I just use it in practice and practice. I never stop. Okay, I, I've thought about that. But if you ever accidentally walk into the room when you're not working on the lighting and there's a mannequin standing there, you freak ass out. You're just like, what, what? We have one in here that you yeah, should no, have. That's a, and that's what, it that is thing. a great tip because we use that in video all the time mm -hmm. because it's hard to get, you know, with your, you know, you're working with somebody, yeah. a subject, you might have a limited amount of time with them. Yeah. If you have, even a, like we'll use just a mannequin head just for the lighting on the face yeah, because just that see. way you don't yeah. have to have somebody sit in, have you mess with the lighting. All you got to do is do little tweaks at the end. Yes. I, I'm going to, I, I actually, I think I'm looking Lenworth. So stick with me for a second. I think I have, I do. I've got a behind the scenes picture, but I, I got to, I got to launch a program that lets the control room see me. So just give me one sec and I, and I think and I, I, I'm going to be curious if you're using something what I'm going to show like what I'm going to show you but where is the program that I use uh, it uh, there it is all right okay give it a second here and let's just see if they see my screen because it is certainly possible and they'll let me know we'll see in three two, two one, one. no no <laughs> they don't see my screen I don't see it, so they don't see it. <laughs> there it goes. There we go. All right. So this is me shooting on a dark background. Mm -hmm. But but what I did here is, and, and this is a this is just a two light setup. I normally on a black background I do two lights. On a white background I do three. And and here are the three. This is this is the standard setup I use here uh, for it. But okay. So I I I my go to is a beauty dish. So what is your main light, Lenworth? A uh, beauty dish. All right. Yeah. How I big? love a beauty dish. I I'm have a 24 inch. 24 inch. That's very yes. luxurious. <laughs> All right. Do you use a sock over the front of it like I've got here, or do you use a grid, or, or what do you use? I've gone. I've played with all three, and I tend to stick with a sock over the front. Yeah. Yeah, me and too. I tend to stick. If with I'm the shooting sock over athletes, the front. I take the sock off. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get a little more. It create like more of a sculpted light. Yeah, yeah. it's more a direction. more contrasty light. Yeah. So, all right, so the sock over the front kind of acts like a softbox. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the beauty dish, uh, the beauty dish does something interesting. So the, the flash is inside, 
it hits a round metal plate. So the light hits the plate, it goes back into the metal dish, and then comes back out again. So the harshness of that light is, is kind of buffered by the light isn't aiming at your subject. The light is aiming at a round metal plate. And then the light bounces back, and then it turns around, and then it goes through a diffusion sock. So the sock, which are, they're not, they're not very expensive, surprisingly, it's one of the cheapest things in photography is to buy this sock, because you realize when you buy it, buy it, it's just a shower cap. Pretty just much. a fancy name for a shower cap that stretches over the front of your light. But that's my main light. My go-to is a beauty dish. Uh, I think my, I have a 24 and I think I have a 17 and I kind of go back and forth between the two and I can never decide why. All right, so the, and, it, and it is directly in front of my subject. That's why I put it on a boom stand because if I don't put it on a boom stand, I'm trying to shoot around a pole that's right in front of me. Boom right. stand is a game changer. It really is. It's for, for, for beauty, you kind of, you have to have that clear shot or, or you're doing a lot of Photoshop work because on the corner of your frame is a pole. Yes. I mean, it's just it's right. just kind of a mess. All right, so you do something similar to this for yes. your main light. Yes, similar all, to that. All right, for my second light, I can either have an assistant hold a reflector, and that's, so this is if you have a limited number of lights. So the only thing about the reflector is, and I use a silver reflector because you want to bounce a lot of light back in. Oh, by the way, the reason why you're, do, you're holding this reflector there in the first place is because when you're just lighting from a 45 degree angle under, you're getting a lot of shadows under her chin and in her eye sockets. So the reflector bounces some of that light from the top back in, it fills in the, the uh, shadows under her chin and it fills in the uh, shadows under her eyes. Now, the only problem with the silver reflector is you can't really make it brighter or darker. I put it as high in the frame as I can get it. So are you using a reflector Lenworth? I use both a reflector and I also have a strip box, a one by three strip box that I have below because I get a little more control from the light there. Yes. You mean like this? Bad. Now, bad, you're, bad. You're, using, <laughs> you're using a strip bank, which is for those of you who aren't familiar with strip banks, they are long, skinny soft boxes. Yeah. One foot by three foot, is that what you're using? Yes. A one by three, okay. And I have a one by three too as well. I think that day, that's just what we had to have, we had right there. I, I notice a lot of times I use the light that's already <laughs> connected and you're like, do I really feel like changing it to a one by three? Nah, I just use that one's fine. But the, uh, the difference here is this one's aiming up at a 45 degree angle and it fills in the lights. But the, the reason why it's better to have a light is you can turn it up. You can't turn up a, a, a reflector. However bright it is, that's how bright it is. But when you've got a 500 watt light there, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can crank it. And there's a recipe to this lighting balance, which is the light on the top has to be about a stop or a half, uh, at least a half, if not a full stop brighter than the bottom one. Yeah. You don't want your subject underlit. Like that's what you would do if you, you want to get, get even with somebody. Like right. for a boxer or something. Yeah, like, yeah, the boxer, exactly. You want to make someone look big and aggressive, a football player or something, yeah. you light them from underneath. And it's like, you know, think about this, right? On Halloween, right? You, you take the take a flashlight, stick it, you know, and you put it under here. And it, you look Yeah, you're scary. telling ghost stories. You're like, tell uh, ghost stories with that, right? Yeah. It's, it's like not flattering light. All right, I'm going to show you the third one in a minute, but we got to take a break. I, there's one more piece of this puzzle we'll look at when we get back, but we're, we're kind of over break time. So we're going to take a break. We're going to do some shout outs to some folks. So coming up next, we're going to be talking more. Uh, we are taking your questions and comments. So while Lenworth's here, let's pick his braids and find out what he's doing. I can already tell you what kind of front light he uses. Yeah. I can tell you what he uses for his second light. I can tell you how big his beauty dish is. He uses a sock. We're, we're picking him apart here. I like this. Yes. Yes. We're going to steal all this stuff. I'm sure after the break, we'll figure out what those next secrets yeah, are. Yeah, let's steal Fantastic. some more stuff. All right, stick around. We'll be right back. I'm Jefferson Graham. I'm a Los Angeles writer, photographer, a former USA Today tech columnist, and I've got a great new class for you on Kelby One. I'll show you where all the best spots are to get your iconic LA shots so you won't be scrambling to find them when you get here. We'll cover epic travel and street photography, awesome sunsets, do some time lapses and panoramas, and I'll show you how to get amazing photos of the city that, of course, gave birth to the motion picture industry. 
Then we'll look up at the amazing palm trees of Beverly Hills 90210, catch the top spots for the LA skyline, movie locations, a killer freeway shot, and of course, we'll be ending at the beach for what I hope will be a memorable sunset. Ready to get started? We're in LA, the birthplace of the movies, so you know what they say. Action! For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. Top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit borisfex.com, add Optics to your cart and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we're back. Scott's here, Eric's here, and we're joined by Lenworth Johnson, a beauty photographer. Where are you out of? You're out of? Houston. Houston. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You're, you know, are you a football fan? Uh Kind of. You're going to have to move the, then. The, the Texans <laughs> just. You're going to have to uh, move because it's not a good football town. Yeah, it's uh, bad. All the sports team there, uh, yeah. they're pretty much. Yeah, because you're, you know, are you feeling good about being here in Champa Bay? <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Champa <laughs> Bay. All right. <laughs> hey, um, we've just, had some just, good years. We've had some good. We've years. had, we, yeah, it's home been, of the champions. It was bad for for a long time. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Just, so we lived it. We did lived you just it see that? Up. Okay, you just saw this this class from Jefferson Graham. So Jefferson um, did this class where to shoot in Los Angeles. Yes. And Jefferson's yes. a great guy. We've known him for many, many years. In fact, I met him out in L.A. You know, way back in the day. You know when I met him? I met him the first Lightroom seminar I ever did, like 12 years ago in Los Angeles. I met him. Cool guy. He's, he's been the tech writer for USA Today for all these years, and he just went out on his own. Mm -hmm. So he's out shooting in San Francisco, out doing a shoot, got his camera set up, doing a, hey, everybody, uh, out on location here. And a car pulls up, guy jumps out, runs, grabs all his gear, jumps in the back of the car and drives off. Grabs the tripod, the, the tripod, camera, the camera, lens all together, just scoops it up. Scoops it up. That is And painful. just takes off with it. it. Takes off with all of his gear, jumps in the car. So somebody gets a picture. Yeah, he's the got car a picture of the and, car. And the, and the license plate. And, the, and they, they contact the police and the police goes, yeah, you know, even if we catch the guy, they'll probably just let him go in a day or two. So, yeah. Your stuff's yeah, gone. that's probably going to take a week for the yeah. report and all that I wouldn't, stuff. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Just kiss your gear goodbye. Kiss your gear goodbye. That's there Jefferson right before he got his gear stolen. Oh, my. Right? There's oh, the car. There it is. There's the license plate. I'm taking your stuff, and it's okay. So, so that's the second person in San Francisco. Who was it? Rob? Oh, I can't think of his last name. He was in San Francisco shooting the Golden Gate Bridge at dawn. Mm -hmm. Guy pulled up and pulled a gun. Not only took the gear he was shooting, went to his car and took all of his, like it was $25,000 worth of gear. Made him empty out his car, all of his bags, everything at dawn. That's the, the second one in San Francisco. So, so that yeah. means we stay away from San Fran? We stay 
We go to towns where their football teams are good. That's basically <laughs> what we do. you going to San Francisco, don't so, take your camera again. You can go to Miami, 10-6 and six last year, and they've got two <laughs> attack of Aloha. So there you go. It's going to be a great year. Okay, back to our story. All right, so when, when we left. Oh, you know, before we get to our story, we do have to tell a couple housekeeping things. One is we got some prizes today to give away, right? Yes, we have prizes. So we've got uh, the Platypod Ultra. We're giving one of those away. Uh, we have Scott's new iPhone book. So great book on how to use the iPhone, which you guys just saw. We're having a conference on the iPhone uh, as well. But uh, the iPhone photography book, we're going to be giving that away. And then uh, the Boris Effects Optics, great plug-in for um, Photoshop and Lightroom and uh, does all that cool effects. So if you want to leave us a comment in the uh, chat, tell us what you'd like to win, ask questions, anything like that, you're just automatically entered and then we'll pick a winner at the end of the show. It, <coughs> and it then we important. got a bunch of people saying, hey, we got Steve Bauer over there from Panama City, Florida saying he hello. Uh, Tim W. Oliver saying hello to everybody over here from Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, Anders from Sweden saying hi. David from Englewood, Florida. Uh, we have Dale from Inglewood, Iowa saying hi. Always up to no good. Yep. And uh, Dulio saying ciao. Uh, Lorini, oh boy, I'll tell you. That's, names I think it's Lorelei. Lorelei, <laughs> there we go, uh, from Alaska. Wow. Fritz saying hi from Germany. Fritz. We got uh, Diane saying hi from San Diego. Steve from Baton Rouge. Uh, Mariana saying hi from uh, Fort Myers. We got Wally from British Columbia. JP Sylvan saying hi. Uh, Jerry, uh, just a bunch of people all over the world saying hi. So hello, if you guys hello. have got any questions, uh, just ask them in the chat. I'll uh, love to. Now, portrait, uh, fashion, beauty, which we all know the difference of now. Yes, now we know. And we're talking now about lighting. So you guys. Yeah. Pretty much are matched lighting so far from what I'm picking up. I'm writing down some questions yeah. uh, that I'm seeing, but you guys are pretty much matched on lighting so far. All right. So here's the third one. All right. So the third one is I, instead of putting like a white background and trying to light it, I actually take a large softbox, I angle it up towards the ceiling. Uh, the reason I angle it towards the ceiling is so I don't get lens flare. Because if I aim it right at me, I'm going to get a ton of lens flare. So I aim it towards the ceiling. And it makes the background completely solid white, which is great. But it also, and this is important, it sends light forward. So on these sides of your face, like right here and here, uh, you have to see me. You get the light coming forward. So in beauty, if you notice a lot of, can we look at some of Lenworth's shots so I can show you what we're talking about? Because my, I have so, an image that was shot just like that. Oh, okay. Well, you can see right there. Well, look, you can see how the light is coming around his face. Yeah, those, those two images were shot just like that. Right, and and that's what I'm talking about. How how it wraps around the face. Now, to to get that wrapping on their face, their hair kind of has to be up, right? It's not going to come through if you have yeah. a bunch of hair blocking everything, but. But anyway, so this is the look it gives. If we can shoot back to my screen for just a sec, this is the this is the shots taken with that that setup, which is you can see the light kind of coming around the face, and I, I pull I had her pull her hair back so you can see that. So and that's that's if you're wanting a white background, right? Right. That's with the white background. And Lenworth, you're, you're doing pretty much the same thing. I, I, yeah, I've done that setup also, and I play with that light in the back. I, I you know, move it closer backwards just to see how far it can come around. Right. And now, the taste I'm looking for. Some of the things you have to worry about are if, if the light in the back is too bright, it fries their hair. Yes. I mean, it doesn't fry their hair in real life. It fries their hair in the photograph. Yeah, like yeah it, you like lose it detail? Looks yes. It looks, yeah. it looks, it looks, it looks like kind of choppy. Crispy, yeah, yeah. choppy, choppy. Yeah. That's a good word for it. All right, so and uh, look at that, man. So what, what about the opposite? What if you're wanting like a dark background? What do you do? You don't use that, you don't, you don't you put a light that light. Uh, yeah, obviously. You remove that light. Yeah, what do you do? You play with distance there. So uh, for example, that uh, image there right in the middle, um, that was shot with two lights. So I have the Butte Edition front, and I have a small light and a small stand in the back, just giving a little halo around the back of her head right there. Got it. Nice. Now the background is it's white. white. Is it, it The background is white. So it's and white it just and moves. it's just the yeah. fall off of just the light the fall that's off. causing yes. the gray. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so sometimes I tell people if they ask me, what kind of, what kind of backdrop should I get? I'm like, get white seamless paper. Yes, because it's pretty dynamic. You can get white, gray, you know, black. black if you yeah. drop a gel in there, then you have color. Yeah, as long as you just, it's, it's based on the distance to the background. But here's the thing. If you have a white background and you don't light it, and I mean light the crap out of it, mm -hmm. it's automatically gray. gray right. Like you'll sit there and look at it and to your eye, it is white. You take the shot and your camera goes, that's gray. Gray, right. So yeah. uh, the, the, the farther away your subject is from that background, the darker gray that we'll get because the only thing that's lighting it is whatever's coming from the front. Yeah, let's peel from the front. Yeah, so you're saying the first thing you guys That's would suggest buying as far as backdrops would be a white backdrop. A white, that, yeah, that yeah. was my very first backdrop. In okay. fact, I painted a wall white and then I bought a roll of seamless paper. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, they, so a couple, couple a questions like here. You, can't tell um, them, you know, you guys are talking about like your main light is a beauty dish. If you don't have a beauty dish, is, would, what, what would you use or would you just say, hey, you got to use a beauty Lenworth? dish? Lenworth? I use a, you can use an Octobox. I've used an Octobox. I have have um, one of those Westcott, uh, I think it's a 3624 spray box, and I use that. So you're using that as your main light? As, the, as my main light. All right. And it's a large softbox, and I like the, the light it gives, because I've been playing with that lately. Do you, now, if you get a, a Westcott Rapid Box, some of them, you can put a plate in them, like, like a beauty dish, even though it's not really a beauty dish. A beauty dish. dish. Yeah, I think the, there's a small one that you can add a flash to that takes the plate. Oh, yeah, that's true. And yes, then it another, goes up the back. Another question, like, um, so uh, you were guys talking about, like, Lenworth was using a strip uh, bank underneath and you were using a square. Does the shape affect the picture at all? Like if you're using a strip versus a square, or is that just a personal it, it, preference? It affects the, the, the reflection in your subject's eyes. In the eyes. Which, by the way, only another photographer will ever know. Yeah. Or will ever even look or even know. So if you were to go to a client and go, what shape do you like as the catch lights in the eyes? They'd go, what? What's a catch light, <laughs> right? Well, and you go, well, there's a reflection. Why is there a reflection? You know. They don't so care. Only other photographers. Look at those catch lights. See those two little white lights in her eyes? That's right. what we're talking about. Right. Now, without them, the eyes look dead. Yes, you gotta right? have a catch light. Yeah, you yeah. want a catch light. And it, it's always reflecting either the sun or whatever light you decided to use. Mm -hmm. So catch lights are important, just but nobody knows that they're there. It's one of those things that it's weird if they're gone. And your client wouldn't be able to tell you, oh, you don't have a catch light. Yeah. In fact, you can. I, I teach how to add catch lights in post because if you're, if you have a situation where the catch light doesn't show up, you can go and make an octa shape in Photoshop. Yeah. There's a tool that looks like an octagon, and you can just bink bink once in each eye. All right. So we got so we got some more questions coming in. Okay. Oh, uh, so uh, this is a question, of, I guess, just for both of you. Uh, what is the best settings for portrait photography? So going back to you know if we're doing portrait photography, so I guess that's yes. just focused on the person yep. and the portrait. What's the best setting? I'm gonna give that? I'm gonna give my two because I have an outdoor and an indoor. Okay. And then I want to hear Lenworth's. Okay. All right, actually I want to hear Lenworth's first. Okay. So Lenworth, uh, what would be your best uh, settings for portrait photography? Well, is there really a best setting? Um well how about I, your favorite? There, I, there's you're right. It's it's there's not an official best. I uh, I normally start at like one one twenty fifth and sometime hovering around f8 i'm at iso 100 and i'm just really i'm using a light meter to measure my lights you know so i might start at a quarter power and till i get my reading and i'm going up from there okay mine's not far off of that yeah. indoors um at, at f11 uh, and i just in when i'm in a studio i'm trying to make everything in focus i want as sharp as focus as i can F11 is kind of a good, happy. Now, I can't tell you. So, Lenworth, you're using F8. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that you're, you would notice the difference between F8 and F11. Yeah, it, it, I guess it just depends on what you want to show. Because um, I've used F11 before, and really, 
F8, F11, you, yeah, you're not it's kind of really right there. It, it's right there. Yeah. No, but those are the those are the magic ones, though. Even you know, go to landscape or, yeah. or, or rockets. I, I'm F8 or F11. There you go. Night or day. All right. <laughs> all, all right. So for outdoors, uh, so. I'm now. So indoors, I'm like Lenworth. I'm at my lowest. You know, I. So what what brand of camera do you shoot, Lenworth? I'm on this, Sony. Sony. Okay. Good. So, uh, and you're at 100? Is, on a, 100 ISO. Okay, so I'm on 100 on my Canon as well. But when I shot Nikon, I was at either 100 or 200, depending on which model I had. Yeah. But you, so, you shoot at the native ISO? Is that why Yeah, the lowest switch? native yeah, number yeah, lowest that I can go ISO. to. I don't go to L01 or L02 because those, like on Nikons, those aren't really sharp or as sharp as the native. So outdoors, I am at uh, either F2.8 if I'm on the 70 to 200, or I'm at F. Uh, if I'm at f1.8, I'm on an 85, right? And I, and I even though I have a lens that'll go to f1.4, you got to be dead on your focus at one point. You are, if you mess up at f1.4, it's a big mess yeah, up. Now, at that point, are you using natural light with those Yeah, settings? outdoors, natural, natural light. light yeah. I, I'm, then I'm trying to put the background out of focus. Yeah. When I'm outdoors, so in the studio, Lenworth and I don't have to worry about yeah. backgrounds. It's white, it's gray. You go look at the big magazine covers. I, I have this thing where I show all these magazine covers from Time Magazine, all these big magazines. And all of the magazines are shooting on seamless paper. It's either gray or it's white or it's black and all because the, it, the portrait is about the person. And when you eliminate distractions, it makes it about the person. It makes it so much more timeless. Oh yeah, and it makes it timeless, yeah. exactly. Outdoors, I want to separate the subject from the background. So I want the background out of focus. It, it eliminates distractions. It simplifies the shot and all. I'm at the lowest f-stop I can go to, f2.8 on a 7200, but if I'm shooting an 85, then I'm at 85 1.8. Hey, can I give a tip about that lens, by the way? Yeah, yeah. All right, so if you want to go buy an 85, so that's that's a very popular portrait lens, mm -hmm. is the 85. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go get the Nikon or the Canon or the Sony, right? So an 85 uh, F 1.8 is it's not just half the price of the 1.4. <laughs> it is, it's $495 for like a Canon 85 1.8. And it's like $1,600, $1,699 for that one more F-stop to get to, to yes. F1.4. And if F1.4, you better be a focusing ninja because the, the, it, the, the amount of your fo photo that will be in sharp focus is such a thin little sliver yeah. that if you are off, like in other words, if you accidentally focus on their eyelashes instead of their eye, their eye is going to be a little soft. Yeah, there's like, no margin for error. There's no margin for area. I could not look at a friend and say, get the 1.4. It's heavy, it's twice as big, twice as heavy, three times the price, and twice as, as scary to shoot. Nice. F1.8, you can nail those all day, 495. Yeah. That's, there, there are very few lenses you can get for 500 bucks that are really good. And you could shoot an entire wedding with it. You could do an entire outdoor portrait session. You wouldn't really use it in the studio. I wouldn't pull out an 80. Well, what do you, what's your lens? What do you use? I have a 7200. I rent my 85s if I have to. I have a 50, I have a 90 mil uh, macro. Ooh, and that's a, nice. a 105. Ooh, so a lot of people love the 105 macro. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that. A lot of people yeah, use man. that as their portrait lens. And, and I'm using you, the Sigma version. Oh, the Sigma, very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, and that's a, that's a one of the things, like with those macros. Like I've know I've heard a lot of people using it for other genres. It's not just macros. They just love it for that style. Yeah. 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 Hey, we we're we we're, we're got yeah, to take a break. Take a break. We got to take a break. We come back. We got some more people asking questions. So we yeah, are. Tons uh, of questions here. We're gonna we're gonna so get to those here keep in just on a second. Them. Uh, Lenworth is with us. Stick around. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Maribel, and I'm so proud to bring to you my first Kelby One class. I'm going to help you make your images really stand out. How? By using everyday materials in a creative way. We're also going to discuss how I tap into my creative team, leaning into friends, family, and other creatives to help you bring your vision to life. That'll open up floodgates of other possibilities for you. I'm gonna teach you how you can create a really couture Hollywood avant-garde dress that's not necessarily bought, but created at home. 
yet has the same visual impact as a really expensive Hollywood gown. It's all about teamwork. Guys, we're not gonna just take a photo, we're making a photo. If you want to learn how to make creative portraits out of everyday material, come watch my class at kelbyone.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Leinbach, and I have a new class on Kelby One. It's called Architectural Photography Basics. If you ever wanted to get into architectural photography, this might be a great place to start. My goal for this class is to teach you what to bring to a shoot, what kind of gear you need, what kind of lenses you need. Also to show you a capture sequence so you know exactly start to finish how I proceed with a project. In the edit section, we'll talk about working between Lightroom and Photoshop. We'll look at raw files and final images to show you exactly what it takes to get a final image. Also, how to deliver to a client, to give the client what they deserve and what they need. So these are some of the basic tools you'll need to start making money at architectural photography. So come join my new class on KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. All right, we are back. We're back, and we have a bunch of questions coming in for Lenworth and Scott. So uh, Don is asking uh, you guys, so for your white background, so Scott, you were talking about that white background uh, that you're creating. Are you pointing the background light towards the camera? When I, in the picture I showed earlier, if you can look here. Yeah. Yeah, so I am, yeah, it's pointing directly towards me. I'm standing directly in front of the subject. I'm back probably eight or 10 feet because I'm using a 7200 and I'm zoomed into about 150. Right, and you, you said it, it's The not, light's aiming at me. It's, it's aiming up at the ceiling, but at you. Right. So it's, it's not yeah. coming straight back at you because then you get the lens flare. Right, so the reason why it's not aimed down further is because of that. Yeah, it's, it's like I'm lighting the ceiling, but I'm shooting into it and it, it's solid Got white. It. So yeah, that is, that is definitely it. Um, if I'm lighting a white paper background, then the lights have to face the, the paper. The paper. Right, and Lenworth, uh, same or do anything it, different? Yes, pretty much the same. I have two lights on the side going in for All the right, white cool. background. But that same setup that Scott just showed, um, you can also shoot that with the light down, but you use like a cheap reflector in front. So take out the beauty dish and the light below. Put a cheap reflector in front, around 32 inches. Just cut a tiny hole in the middle, put your lens through and shoot. Oh yeah, you know who makes, yeah, that's, who makes, is it Jerry Jehonas that makes a version of that? It is a reflector with a hole in it to shoot through. Okay. Oh, so you're just bouncing the light back at back, your subject? Back at the subject, yes. Yeah, and your lens is in the middle. I wanna, yeah. I wanna say it's, it's a Westcott product yeah. and I wanna I'll think it's it from Jerry Jehonas. Eric will go do the research. I'll go do the research. Yeah. Because well, he's such a baby that, face. Lenworth, there's a question here. Janice is asking, uh, what is your go-to lighting? Like how many lights, strobes, et cetera? Just like, what is your go-to? Like if you had one lighting setup, what's your go-to? Um, pretty much a two light setup. Go in with a gray background and uh, just keep a beauty dish and the light below. I use that a lot. It's so, so it's like, this is this correct? What you're yes. Saying? Yeah. Pretty much so it's like a beauty that. dish yeah. and a light. But now the, the the what he's using is a strip bank. So a strip it's, bank. Yeah. It's a one foot by three foot. By three feet. Yeah. If you give me a second, I'll find a picture of one. I'm sure I got one on here. If if I'm on like one of those uh, backgrounds, those creative backgrounds, then I'll put a light in the back just to give a little halo. All right, I think I found one. Give me one second. Here's a strip bank. This is, this is a strip bank. Yep. It's tall and thin. Now, yeah. he turns it sideways. Sideways. He doesn't, he doesn't have it under, under her like that. No. Nope. But, yeah, they, they rotate right they, they rotate, you know, just 360. So you turn it sideways, and it does. They actually do a nice job. I, now, now that he's saying that, I'm feeling like I should have put my strip yeah, bank. Yeah, there's just a nice <laughs> little strip of light in the eyes that it gives that I like. No, it is. It's nice. <coughs> but, but Lenworth, you know, it's just you and me and Eric that are enjoying that, 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 uh, that reflection. It's just us three, you're like, yeah, hey, you man, know. he put a strip bank there. You can see, you can see the reflection. Customers don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people, if you want to know what lighting they use, zoom in on the eyes. You can see a reflection of what, exactly what they used, right? You can and I've and studied that for a long time by just looking at images. I buy magazines and I look through just to figure out how they light it. Yeah, I want to I look here. Let's see. 
Well, that's a good, yeah, and that's a great tip right there. Is you know, I mean, really, the eyes tell the story of the yeah. lighting too, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, I just pulled up a beauty shot that I did at the at the Rialto Theater. So I was, we were doing a fashion shoot, and she had this big crazy dress. And we had a fashion designer that designed this dress. We're all in the thing, and I, and I thought, you know, hey, let's try a beauty shot. As it turns out, the model was fantastic in beauty. But you can look at the eyes. You can see what I did. You can see the light. Yep. You can see the reflector under it. You can even see it's a silver reflector. That's like yep. cheating. Pretty nice. And then uh, that's a that's a very large. It was a giant, giant, giant pro photo. Umbrella. <laughs> no, it's it. Well, it's a. Uh, it's weird. It's it's thirteen thousand mm. dollars. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a rental. It's thirteen thousand dollars. Yes, for thirteen thousand. They don't call it an it. umbrella, though. It's a. They have another word for it because you can't charge thirteen thousand dollars for an umbrella. But yeah, you can look right in the eyes and see exactly what what, what it was. Well, there you go. That's a great tip. So yeah. yeah, always looking in those eyes to figure out. Yeah, just zoom yeah. in. You can see. Oh, look! Yeah. He used to look like a big, looks like a big silver softbox, and there's a reflector. And you can see it's. You can even see it's a, like a Joe McNally tri grip. Yeah, you, you can see. see it. It. Look, it's That's a tri grip. So cool. He used a tri grip in the eyes. Is that like okay. a parabolic? Yes, a parabolic. It is yeah. a giant parabolic. Yeah. And those are like if you go to New York and you go to a fashion shoot, they're all using either the bronze color, or the pro photo, and you know. You know what? They rent them. There's a company I'm looking at because I'm thinking of getting one, and it's way cheaper. Oh yeah, it's the one. The the pro photo stuff is what's used by that one. Yep. Oh yeah, there you go. Oof. It's seven hundred fifty-seven dollars. Yeah. Yep. And it comes with a stand and everything. Now, what size is that though? It, that, that looks That's kind a twenty-five of inch. I was gonna say that looks kind of small because we're talking. This other one was like a seventy-two inch. Yes, they have various sizes. Yes, they have various, yes. they have various sizes. I've been looking at this company because I'm like, ah, that looks right. so sweet. It's half the price. Hey, so I, yeah, way it's, it's more hard than when it's half the price. Yeah. It's like the lens you were just I know, talking I know. about. No, I know. It's like I understand. One f stop. I get it. But you know Do what? I mean, stop. what I will say about the 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 pro photo stuff in the, in the one time that I used it is it is built like a tank. <laughs> <laughs> it is built like a tank. Yep. But uh, so another question, uh, Dave's asking. Uh, when setting up a production, what's the most difficult aspect of it? You know, I think your answers might be different here because of the difference in the style. Yeah. So what would you say, uh, Scott, is your most difficult aspect of producing uh, a shoot? I, 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 I have it so easy. Uh, you know, thanks to Christina. I, I just have to, my, the hardest part is typing the email and saying, hey, Christina, I need a theater. I need a, I need to rent a this. I need an aquarium, whatever it is. And then, and then the next thing I know, she just sending me, how's this location? How's this? Uh, the, uh, so I think Christina just wrote, finding locations is the hardest part. I, I would say that is, I don't have to do it, you know, I, luckily. So I don't want to, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to. I'm so, not, it's not fair. I don't get so, it. So, Lenworth, what would Lenworth, you say is yours your... Is more realistic. Yeah. Well, well, for me, it's, um, you know, it's really finding, like, if I'm doing an outdoor or on, a, on location, it's finding that spot. Um, but I lean towards my team. Um, it's very important that you have people that you can trust, people that are seeing your vision and are willing to work with you because they will help you through that process and make it so much easier. Hey, hey, Linworth, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm, I, can I tell you why I like shooting fashion? The main reason I like shooting fashion, to be quite honest with you, is it is the most fun of any shoot because it's a team. Yes. There are so many people on the set, like oh, you've yeah, got a yeah. hair stylist, you've hair got stylist. makeup, you've got assistants, you've got and everybody is working together to create the vision. Yeah, it's very it, collaborative. It is a very yes. collaborative, like a beauty headshot, you know. Yeah. It's you and the model and an assistant, right? And maybe hair and makeup mm -hmm. and all. But when you do a fashion shoot and you're dealing with wardrobe and you've got a designer and you've got a stylist and you've got props and it's like, it's 
it's a it's a it's a mess. It's a giant. Yeah, it's it, it got to be a team effort. Without a team, it will hope the whole thing is going to fall apart. Yeah, and but but that's what I love about it. Yeah. My favorite thing, if like I'm going to shoot fashion, it's because I love the whole experience of the day. Mm-hmm. It is just it's it's tiring and it's it's fun, but it's uh, I want to see if I've got a. Uh, Give me one second. Anything, here. Scott. You and I enjoy being around people. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. If you if you like people, yeah. now if you don't like people, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Hang on. One if you s- don't like people, get into Milky Way photography and shooting rockets and rockets <laughs> and shooting <laughs> rockets. Then you're all by yourself, no. and no one no. bothers you. It's very nice. However, you know. So to follow up, uh, Christina actually chimed in on this topic and said her hardest thing with the production is finding locations. So the nice part about the studio is it's a studio, but yeah. whenever you go out and have to do the location fashion shoots, uh, that tends to be the hardest. Like I know the one um, you did recently, Scott, that was really cool, because I get to pop in or see stuff every once in a while. It's like uh, you guys went to the Tampa Theater and did something. Like I, just, when you're, I just brought up a picture. Boom, there you go. Take a look at my screen. I just brought up this picture. There's Christina right there. there. It is. Nice. And so this is all the people that we needed to do a shoot with their, we have our ballerina. We shot a ballerina in the Tampa theater and uh, it was, this is the crew and, but it's so much fun. The dynamic of the yeah. shoot is just, it really makes it a lot of fun. And there's also whoever took this picture too. So <laughs> somebody yeah. didn't make the group shot, but uh, yeah. it, it's, it's having a team and, and everybody, and everybody knows what you're trying to do. Like you're saying, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this one thing. And, uh, and Dobson there, who's helped us on a number of shoots. If you tell him what, what to do, he's going to figure out a way to get it done. He's really an incredibly handy guy, but, but everybody's working towards whatever you're trying to do. And I think, Oh, look at Juan's there, Jason's there, Mike's there. Look at that, Mike on the end, making a cameo. You don't see Mike on camera very often. Occasionally you see Jason, maybe you can sneak Juan on. I think that might be our first, it's, it's not a cameo, it's a Mikey-o. Mikey-o. It's a there Mikey-o in the end there. But anyway, um, it, it is, it is I, I love that aspect of it. And I think uh, that now, so Christina was saying that the hardest part is, is the location. Locations, yeah. So now we do have a secret weapon. Do you see the woman in the middle named Kathy? You guys have heard of talk about Kathy Perepsky. Yes, Kathy. So when you need a location in Tampa Bay, you call Kathy <laughs> and Kathy will tell you where to go. It's like, oh, I know this. Kathy or, oh, knows about this? everybody and everybody loves Kathy. So everybody wants to help Kathy. Well, and the fact, you know, we talk about like a lot of people have gone to Photoshop world, right? And yep. we'll have like location shoots or, um, uh, like the natural light shoots, usually Kathy is pulling strings to make a lot of that stuff happen. So nice. there you go. Hey, Dan's got an interesting question here, Eric. Yeah, Dan's saying, um, so in your behind the scene shot, uh, the model is facing the camera straight on. Wouldn't you have her turn her body at all? So it is very common for a beauty shot to be shot straight on. Sure. That's, that's not uncommon. Yes. Now, if I'm doing a portrait and my job is to make a person who is not a professional model look good, the very first thing I do is have them turn their body. Most people look better and they look trimmer and it's just a more flattering look right. to not be straight on to the camera. Yes. Professional models, though, are fantastic at posing straight on. And, and so you'll uh, see yeah. in my portfolio, in, in, and I'm sure Lenworth, can we pull up Lenworth and take a look? You'll see yeah. both straight on into the, so I'll do both. I'll yeah. have them, I'll have them start. I always have them start straight on and then they on their own will, will turn and stuff. Yeah, I pre, yeah, pretty much do the same thing. Yep. Where I have them rotate just to see. Yeah. Ooh, that shot you were just how, looking how, at. How beautiful it, it looks. Hey, look at that great, look at the shoulders on the first shot there. Their shoulders are so great, greatly posed. Yes. You know, when you bend things and you twist things, it makes the image look more interesting. Yeah, it gives it the more dimension. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, that's depth. what I see is dynamic. Yeah, yeah more yeah. dimension. But can we look at some more of his images just as a reference? I like that over the shoulder shot there, too. But you can see it goes back and forth. But look how many of them are straight on toward the camera. Mm-hmm. Like the shot with the yellow yeah, background, yeah. the one in the middle there. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the shots are straight towards the camera. Shoulders straight, but these are professionals, right? These are these. Yes. This is not the vice president of marketing. 
So that's a that's a big distinction there. So I think in that question, it's more about like when you are doing portraits and posing people. Yes. That, that it might be more that portrait line. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, it's much it's a much more flattering look to have somebody at an angle. So Joe's asking a question of what f f stop would you go um, with if you're working with hand painted backdrops? Same thing for me, f eleven. Yeah. So yeah, I'm indoors. So it's more about lighting the backdrop than what you're setting. Yes. Yeah, because I, I, if, if I'm using a painted backdrop, I want you to see the backdrop. Right. Like I want you to see the texture and I want you to see that I want everything in focus. Now, uh, if, like look at that. You see how you can see the texture. Yes. It's a nice shot, by the way. Yes, Dude, I love your lighting. Thank you. Your now lighting I have that was money. just uh, two lights. There's one light in the back and one light in the front. Very nice. Yeah. And the light you have is hitting the background, or is it kind of facing towards him and bouncing <coughs> off it? It's it's in the background. So you're you're yeah. aiming at the background with yes. the light. Yes, right. and I think for that one, I also had a grid on that beauty dish. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. you know what? I t I will with a guy because I want it to be more contrasty and snappier. Yeah. <laughs> I take the sock off. I put the grid on. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, when we mentioned a grid, uh, it's a it's a show that comes on every Wednesday at one. No, what a grid is, and they come in medical metal and fabric. It is, and I'll find one for you here in a second. It takes the light. So you have the beauty dish, right? And so picture this: the light goes out, more right? directional with the grid. When you put the grid in, right, it becomes very directional. It's like a a pool of light. I'm going to go find a grid for you while we're looking here. It is magical yeah. how that works. It, yeah. it works amazingly yeah. well. And they, they, like I said, they make them in fabric yes. and they make them. Um, and you have um, like different variants, like 20 degree, 10 degree, or 40 degree. So right. The, based on how thin. Yes. There's a, now that what you're seeing there is a fabric grid. You would not put that over a, uh, a beauty dish here. I got, I have two here. I can show you. Give me a sec here. And I'm going to open these up. They're, they're not awesome. But all right, here's a close-up of the beauty dish with the metal grid over it. So it's, it's, it, looks, it looks like this. Here's a metal grid. It's metal. And, and like Lenworth was mentioning, like the lower the number, the tighter the spot. Mm -hmm. So if you want it super tight, you know, like a 10 degree, and then you got a 13 degree, and you have different ones. And, it, and it, it, in this case, they're Velcroing on. Oh, that looks bad. Velcroing. Let me back up. There we go. It Velcros right over the front. It just depends on the beauty. Just yeah, sometimes they pop inside. Yeah, some of them just slip on. What brand of lights do you use? I'm using a Godox. All right. Yeah, I'm on Godox. Yeah, Godox stuff is yeah. fine. And I use a Westcut a softbox too. Oh yeah, and a Westcott so softbox. Yeah, and hey, mix like you up. say all the time. I mean, it is a bright. Flash it's a bright of light, flash of light, <laughs> and all you're doing is sculpting it. It's yep. a bright that's flash of light, yeah. and it doesn't know. The light doesn't know where it came from. It doesn't nope. know the make well, and model. And that's what's so, but the so interesting are very about affordable. this is like even like you guys explaining it um, on the show today. It's like it really does look like it's a very similar patterns with the lighting, and then it's more about the creativity, which is, yeah. and that's the cool part about yeah. photography. I think is yeah. you know then taking it and then doing something with that, making creative, all the stuff that you're doing with the makeup or the, or the locations mm -hmm. and stuff all right. like that. Can we go back to, to Lenmore's thing? Cause I, I'm going to critique his work now. It, Unsolicited uh -oh. critique. Uh oh. No, no, I, I'm that. only going to point out good stuff because there's, <laughs> there's nothing bad here, but, but I, I want to point out something that for people that want to get into this line of work. Yes. All right. His lighting is spot on, right? His lighting looks great. So we're, we're, there's nothing there, but what, what he has that makes his stuff stand out is it, it is, he has a very graphical nature to his, his photographs. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the yellow shot, the symmetry of the shot, and then you break that symmetry with her hand. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, so his, his sense of color is really good. But a lot of it, and this is, this is the starting place for all of this. He can only photograph what's in front of him. Yep. But what he puts in front of him, and this is his doing, is he puts interesting people that know how to do this style, yeah, right? With interesting makeup, with, yeah. interesting, with interesting makeup, uh, wardrobe. Yeah. With inter so like by the time he goes. adds his lighting, yeah. right? It brings yeah. it all together. It brings it all together, and and then he's able to get expression, and 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 you know he gets a lot out of his subjects. Like look at this shot. That's a really cool shot. But it started with a great subject, mm -hmm. great makeup great hair you know and then when you add all of the other stuff but it's it's from where you're starting from right mm -hmm. like 
she walked into the set and she's got really cool makeup and really cool yeah. hair and and she has facial features yeah. that look fantastic for photography not everybody is photogenic yeah and i'm putting all of this stuff together by using a mood board i um do you use I, pinterest i use pinterest and I, you know, find images that I like and I put them together, do something in Photoshop, you know, kind of put it together. Can you place. explain so to people explain that don't know what a mood board, what right? a mood yeah, board is? I say too. <laughs> well, a mood board is, is just basically, it's the start of an idea. So if you want to shoot, um, if you pull one of those images up, if you want to shoot, um, say, some kind of beauty shot, and you start with an idea. You say, okay, you want this kind of yeah, makeup. Pull, pull up an image there again, uh, one of those images. There we go. Okay, for example, that one. I, I know I wanted the hair to have the rolls. I need, it needed to go out like that. And I know I needed them. So I draw this out, you know, talk to my makeup artist. Then I go and find images and put it together all in a board. We lay it out and we look at the makeup and decide, okay, this will work with it or this won't work with it. Right, I use Pinterest for that. Yeah, so it's a starting uh, place for you to do it. Yeah, and to show your team. Yes. Here's it, where I, this is the basic look I want to get. Yeah. So you're not trying to steal someone else's photography. No, you're not it's, trying yeah, to recreate that. It's just that. an idea. You, 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 yeah. you just to give you oh, a starting yeah. I mean, spot. This is this yeah. is like this is a key to photography. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. I mean, if you like good photography, you've got to like take that inspiration and then build on. Yeah. It. Just in fashion and beauty, yeah. they actually have a name for it. It's a mood board. Yeah. Mood board. And now the mood board might also include color. Color. Like it might literally have literally color chips. Yeah. I want to do something with this bright, bright yellow, like that yellow that you had in that shot earlier. Pose might, in. Yeah, you, you know, might have a whole one yeah. of just poses. Yeah. Now I've also taken that mood board on my iPad and and taken it to the model and say, this is the kind of feel I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. These are the types of poses, and they'll look at it and they'll study it and they're like, okay, boy, I still love this shot. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've got a number of them from that same shoot, but. Yes. Just though I love the way you lit it because it's it's a bright beauty shot with drama. Yes. It's got yeah. dramatic light in it too. It is very cool. She's a great subject too. I mean she's she's got a great oh, yeah. she's beautiful. A great awesome. face and and her expressions are really good and she's really it all comes it all works together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it sounds cool. I mean I I, don't, I know that, you know, like I'm love planning. I love He does. I, I love that stuff. It he loves really the planning. Cool. Yeah. And but, that's why I do the same thing. I mean a lot of times, uh, too, with video, uh, we're storyboarding. Because yeah, we have to have, yeah, like, so what are the different the same, shots, yeah. what are the shot lists, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they have a name the for it. Mood, yeah. story the mood board. board. It's a mood it's board. It's like, mood like a storyboard. Board. Board. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. it's what Can it is. Can we go back we to that yellow story. shot? There we go. He because, just wants to keep on looking at it. Well, no, because there, I just want to <laughs> point good. out. So one thing that's very important in beauty and fashion are accessories. Right? And I'm talking about her nails, the hat. The clothing, the, the the color combination of the lipstick to the hat, like this is a team of people working on this, mm -hmm. right? Yes. This is because you've got her, you've got a stylist, you've got makeup, but this all started with the photographer. Yes. It all started with I'm trying to make a particular kind of image, and it's just like a cook, right? Yeah. So think of Lenworth yes. as the cook. Yes. I'm trying to put together this meal. It's your ingredients, and, and I want this meal to be the chicken sandwich from Popeyes. No, I want this. <laughs> I want this meal. Or Zaxby's. Or Zaxby's. Very nice, but the sauce is really good there. Just not KFC. You know. So, so you're 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 the cook, but you're pulling together all these things, these ingredients. I'm going to use this pot. I'm going to use a gas stove. I'm going to do all these things. And then when it's done, you get the picture. But it's all of these things come together, but there's still a cook that has to, you know, and again, if you have great ingredients, if you have fresh meat, if you have fresh bread, if you have fresh stuff, you, your chances of success are terrific. Yeah. Boom. Boom. All right. Well, we are over time, <gasps> but we do have some prizes to give away. And we also, I think, have a couple more questions, but... We could kind of maybe while we're doing the prizes, maybe um, do one or two more questions. So, All right. Um, uh, Video TT is asking any do's or don'ts when it comes to subjects clothes. I, I have one real quick. So the first thing that I ask uh, when a subject's on the set, I ask them, and I'm just pretty frank with them. Look, how do you feel about nude photography? Because <laughs> if you say the word, my clothes come off. I do most of my shoots nude. 
I don't really care what they're wearing, but I'm I'm usually naked. No. So <laughs> all right. No, I have I have a couple of things. Ready? Yes. Solid colors. If I'm shooting a portrait, the, if I'm shooting a portrait, I don't want the clothes to take away from the subject. Yeah. Don't bring prints. Don't bring like patterns and stuff yeah. that are going to take away from. A portrait is about you, and it's about your face, and it's about the person. Mm -hmm. So I'm like simple clothing. I, I don't like them to particularly wear black or white unless I'm trying to do something very specific. Yeah. Like I've shot someone wearing all white on a white background mm -hmm. and I've shot people wearing all black on a black background. But generally if they come with a white shirt on a black background, it's, it's not going to make for a very dynamic, you know, I just love color. I mean, I, I want to pop a color in whatever I'm doing yeah. and you're, I, I love the, the way you use color. So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much doing the same thing you are doing. All right. So stay yeah. away from all the prints. Yep. Unless that's something specific. So that's, specific. that's like the big don't is prints yeah. or yeah. patterns. I would say don't don't wear prints and patterns unless you're doing fashion. Then it's about the clothing. Yeah. But for, yes. for a portrait, um, the other thing I tell them, the do's are bring to the shoot a lot of accessories. Yes. So so Christina will know, like if I say I need a model for this and other, and she's like, what are the instructions? Solid colors and tell them to bring a lot of accessories. <laughs> She is over there, there she is over there in a spy cam spy cam <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's it's yeah bring a lot of accessories you know bring everything bring hats bring sunglasses bring whatever we may not use it all but and also have oh i have i have a big secret coming up here go ahead and learn with what you can say. Uh, you know amazon is um one of my spots you know i go on there and i find stuff and i'll just buy stuff so i have a big case that I have a bunch of stuff in and it comes to a shoot day, I can just pull stuff out to go with whatever I'm shooting. So I, a big thing, I'm do show accessories. That. Yes. Hold on, accessories. yeah. One th more thing, I got, I got two things, hold on. I want to show you something. Well, why, that, while you're waiting for that, do that. let's uh, Call do the, the prizes. Winners. So um, yeah. we got RJ from Florida is winning the uh, Boris Effects Optics. Nice. And then we got uh, Wendy B is winning Scott's iPhone book. And then Patty Smith is winning the Platypod. So there we go. We got uh, just email us over at gridprize at kelby1.com and we'll verify your information and send you your prize. All right. So take a look on screen. See those glasses? Mm -hmm. They're like four dollars on Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Like you can get accessories on Amazon that are just incredibly, incredibly yes. inexpensive, and they look great. Some pretty cool stuff. I mean, seriously, so inexpensive. Like it was like four bucks. All right, I got another place. All right, I, I, I'm gonna. I might have to look up the name. I want to think it's called JJ's House. Have you heard about this? Yes. Yes. Uh, unbelievable <laughs> yes. prices. Just like ridiculous. I think it's JJ's House dot com. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah. go look it up. But but it it is <coughs> like stuff that would be hundreds. Like I did a. I did a. I did a fashion shoot in Paris on a rooftop. And I bought this stuff at JJ's house and flew it to France with me because it's just, it's, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Yep. JJ's house. They're, it's their accessories. Like mm -hmm. if you could go under accessories and jewelry up at the top, all the way across, keep going, go, 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 go over there. Yeah. And, and they have, well, not the bridal stuff, <coughs> just the other like headpieces. Go to headpieces, like right where you were, go, go where you were. Yeah. Headpieces. Uh, these look like wedding headpieces. They've got like, all right, give me a second. I, I'm gonna, I got, I got it here. Don't but as move. you go down, I see like I'm on the site now too, and it really changed. You know, there's Change tons of stuff. Us. But when you think about it, who's going to know how much that stuff costs? Nobody. After you shoot it, no one will know. No one will know. You're exactly right. Yeah, there's right. some really cool stuff on here. It's like eight bucks, four bucks. Yeah, it's it's nine ridiculous. Bucks. I, I I know I have it here. Hold on. Wow. All right, I, I, all right, That's I have it here. Cool. Take a look on screen. So look at these look at these hats. Now these are like Art Deco hats, right? Twenty four dollars, twenty six dollars, twenty four, thirty seven. I mean these are like Derby Day hats, twenty two, yep. and and so I, th that's where that's where I get I get some of this stuff. Yeah. Is is JJ's house has got great stuff at, yeah, I at think a super used bargain. This, this hat I'm looking at right now before it's seventeen dollars. I think I've seen that in one of your pictures. Yeah, give me a <laughs> sec, I'll show you. Hang on. Yeah, I have a bunch of fascinators too that, you know. I've yes, been, Lindsay's been, big on yeah. those. Yeah. She, she does love a good fascinator. Yeah. Hold on. 
let me show you one more and it's using one of those i think it's 18 i think it's uh 18 dollars is what uh now th this is these and for are us don't know what a fascinator is it's just a type of hat right yes it's, it's like a to the side <laughs> yeah you wear you don't wear it like this is kind of a, a of it now this is this is just case. out of the camera this is not retouched or anything so this this doesn't look fantastic but um but yeah it's just kind of hanging off there and it's see-through it's like 18 bucks yep yeah it's like come on 18 bucks but right there it looks like a million bucks yeah it looks like a million bucks when you put it in the picture so yeah. so jj's house amazon we, we got just some good tips here at good the end tips. didn't we good tips i had one more thing i was going to say when we were talking about um uh like what to wear and I, I i i've completely forgotten it at this point so it doesn't matter yeah all right did we get our winners did you make yeah we got winners? our winners uh and we're all good so well lenworth where can people go learn more about you at lenworth johnson photography.com i'm on instagram at lenworth.johnson there's also a link tree so you can go to wherever else you can find me a link tree yes yeah, so you click on that and it takes you to the other world oh look I've never seen that before. Am I like the last one, Eric? Eric's nodding like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, my son would tell me I'm not tech savvy, so he sets this stuff up for me. All right. There you go. Hey, it's Takes family. Yeah, he said he got to explain the internet to me. <sighs> Did you tell him that you were using the internet before he was born? I know, right? <laughs> you, look, you look pretty young. I don't think your son's 46. <laughs> He's just 15. Oh, 15? Yes. Yeah, okay, my daughter's 15 too. Yeah. So he and, thinks and, he's my manager. Yeah. I'm, I'm living that life, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, she comes out and tells me stuff, and I look at her like, like, really? Mm -hmm. Really? There's a .NET, too? And uh -huh. a .org? What? You know, yeah. <laughs> like, she tells me things like, you know, like, let me tell you how this is, Dad. It's not all .coms. Mm -hmm. Tell me No more. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she loves it. She yeah. loves it. She yeah. loves it. All right, Eric. We don't really need to know anything yeah, more about no, you, but I do good. want to say this. I'm liking this baby face. Oh, yeah. Retro. Dude, it's so clean. Retro. So clean. It's really, I, I don't know what to say. It just, it's, it's, it's like a, I'm having throwback Tuesday. No, it's Wednesday. I forget what day it is. <laughs> anyway, Lenworth, it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for sharing your tips and, and all that stuff. That was really yeah. great. Thank you for having me. It was fun, and it's a fantastic team. Oh, that is it. Great. We, we have a great team here. Yes. We, we really do. We're very, very awesome. Blessed. Awesome. We, we've got the best folks. And I, I want to give them a thanks in the in the uh, control room today. Jason's getting down. <laughs> I think Victor's here. Ron's here. Uh, let's see. Mike. No one today. Christina. Ooh. Christina. They're they're made their queen who uh, yeah. who was uh, she does everything. She's awesome. Oh, yeah. And you got to see her live on camera today yeah. and in pictures, which is rare, a rare, rare thing. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to Lenworth. Thanks to Mr. Kuna. I'm off to do a portrait shoot. And uh, we will catch you guys. We got anything coming next week? Anything fun? Anything new? Anybody here? It'll be fun. It'll be new. It'll be a new episode next week. Yeah? I guarantee it. <laughs> will I have hit my book deadline by next week? We'll see. June 4th is my deadline. For and my, don't forget iPhone conference. We got that coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. So go to Kelby One Live for that. I was actually going through my iPhone photos. I have so many iPhone photos. It's ridiculous. I have On my phone, I have 14,000. So many. 14,000. Yeah. It's crazy. Love that camera. All right, everybody, take care. We'll catch you next week right here live on the grid. Take care, everybody. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator.
Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today.